Hello and welcome, this is Jennifer McGuire and I am really excited about today's video. Today I'm going to share with you kind of an introduction to Discovery Oxide inks. The reason I am so excited about these inks is that they are so very different than the inks that are already on the market. It kind of changes the whole game of card making, of stamping, of inking, and it is something new that will open the door to many techniques. So. Keep in mind that this is kind of a discovery video. I am just learning and getting to know these inks, so you, I'm sharing that with you. So I will have more videos, a series of videos coming soon where I share more details about the inks and techniques you can do with them. But I just wanted to give you kind of the basics here. And keep in mind that I am not an expert on these inks because they are new to me. Tim Holtz is the creator of the ink, so be sure to check out his blog for more information. But I will share things as I learn them. And also, because I'm a card maker, everything I create today while playing with these inks, I will turn into cards at the end of this video. So be sure to stick around for that because I like to give everything I create, so I have to include that. Okay, so let's just start with the basics. So Distress Oxide inks are a completely new type of ink. In the past, we've had dye inks and we've had pigment inks. Some of those inks have special characteristics, but pretty much they're dye or pigment or there's some kind of thing in between that's like a chalk or a hybrid. Well, this ink, Distress Oxide inks, is completely different because it is a fusion of dye inks and pigment inks. So you get some properties of dye and some properties of pigment, which is really fantastic because you can take advantage of the best of both types of inks because they are fused together. Now, traditional Distress inks are actually dye inks that react with water. So this is different in that it is fused together with the pigment so you can get the best of both worlds. Now the Distress Oxide ink pads look just like Distress inks, but they're silver around the edge so you can tell them apart. And there are ring inkers available for these, and I will cover those in another video. There are 12 colors of Distress Oxide inks available right now, and you can see which colors here. I'm actually gonna use all of them except for the two browns in today's video. Now I really feel that the best way to get to know an ink is to actually get inky yourself. So let's go ahead and do that. On the left is the traditional Distress ink and on the right is the Distress Oxide ink. And you can see the difference even though these are the same colors, Wilted Violet. Now the pad itself is very similar. It's that firm pad. So it's not, the Oxide ink isn't like pigment inks with those squishy ink pads that can be kind of messy on stamps. This is a firm ink pad. So I find that it stamps really well too. Okay, now the traditional Distress ink there on the left is a dye ink. That means it's translucent. When you stamp it on paper, it kind of just, kind of absorbs into the paper and becomes one with it, so it's see-through. So as I put my finger onto the ink pad, you can see that it kind of dyes my finger and you can still see through that. So if I were to stamp this or rub this onto dark cardstock, it unfortunately pretty much disappears because it absorbs into the paper. You can see right through it because it is translucent. Now pigment inks, on the other hand, they're opaque. So they sit on top of the paper so you can see them. So you see how it's on my finger? It looks kind of like paint on my finger. Well, Distress Oxide inks are a fusion of dye and pigment. So check it out. It has that opaque property of pigment inks so that when you put it on a dark cardstock, it kind of sits on top and you can see it. So that is the advantage of, one of the many advantages of the Distress Oxide ink is that they are have that opaque property to them that allows you to use them on dark colored cardstocks. I'm just gonna quickly stamp this Hero Arts image here and you can see that it stamps beautifully like a pigment ink on dark cardstock but it also has those dye ink properties, so we have that advantage too. It's kind of like the best of both worlds, and you can use them however you want. Okay, so let's go ahead and put some onto paper. Here you can see the difference. Now dye inks, you can actually uh, heat emboss them. They stay wet long enough that you can put embossing powder on and heat emboss them, but Distress Oxide stays wet longer, so you can really get great heat embossing with it. You can see that it's wet on my paper there on the bottom. However, it will dry on its own. I think it, it doesn't have the glycerin like pigment inks do, so it dries very nicely and it leaves a soft chalky look. I also find that because of the pigment fusion, you actually get better stamped images with the oxide inks than you do with the regular Distress ink. So I'm really excited about that. 
Another thing is you can ink blend with these. Now here at the top, I have the regular Distress Ink. On the bottom, I'm going to use the Distress Oxide Ink. And you'll see that it blends really easily and beautifully because it's kind of wet, more wet as you're blending it. It's got that pigmentness to them that allows you to blend them. So if you struggle with blending, stay, stay, stick around till the end of the video because I'm going to show you how much better the oxides are for blending. Now on dark color cardstock up at the top, I tried to ink blend with Distress Ink. It doesn't work because it's translucent, but because the oxide inks are opaque, you can see that you can get beautiful blending even on dark colored cardstocks. Okay, now for water. One of the greatest things about Distress Ink is that it reacts with water. Well, the oxide inks do too, and that's when you get that oxide look. On the top, I've put traditional Distress Ink. On the bottom is Distress Oxide. I'm going to real quick heat set this. You could just let it dry on its own. But I wanted you to see that chalky finish that you get on the bottom there with the Oxide Inks. It's like this matte, creamy, chalky look that doesn't rub off, and it's gorgeous. Well, I wanted to show you how these react with water. So I'm just going to put some large drops of water onto here. We're going to do lots of techniques or looks at techniques in this video today. So on the top, you'll get that reaction with water, but check it out when you put it on the oxide ink. You'll immediately see that oxide look starting to appear. And as it dries, it just intensifies even more. See how it's kind of got that oxide look around the edge, that, that white kind of magical look? That's the difference with these inks because what happens is when you wet it, you kind of get a separation of the dye and the pigment. And so the reaction with water is spectacular. Okay, so we'll talk more about these properties and this reaction with water, but first we got to talk about the colors that are available because if you're like me, you got to know about the colors. Now there are 12 colors available right now. They're available in the full ink pads and the reinkers. I don't believe that Ranger plans on releasing ink cubes because the properties of these inks are better if you have them in a full ink pad. So keep that in mind. Now, when you smear it directly onto the paper, you can see how vibrant this color is. It almost feels like a dye ink crossed with a paint. That's what you get with that fusion of dye and pigment. Look how beautiful that is. Very nice and solid. And when it dries, you get this gorgeous chalk-like look. It's kind of velvety or suede looking, soft, absolutely beautiful, very different than any ink that I've ever used. And check it out when you put it onto dark cardstock, nice and vibrant. But I personally like using the ink blending tool with the oxide ink on the dark cardstocks. It just gives you this nice glow to the edge of the paper. And by the way, I do use ink blending tools with the oxide inks just like I do the regular. So here are the 12 colors that are available, a great array of colors. Now I have my ink swatches in these little coin pockets here, but I wanted to show you that you do get that kind of chalk look. You can't really see it through the coin pockets. I do have free downloads over on my blog, so you can print these little swatches and create your own if you want to. Now on the back side of this ink swatch, here I have put the ink on to black cardstock with the ink blending tool, just so I can see what the color looks like there. Okay, now the other thing that everybody's gonna wanna know about is how well it stamps. If you've watched my videos before, you know I use Distress Inks a lot for techniques, background techniques, painting, so on and so forth, but I rarely use Distress Inks for stamping. So I first had to test out the Distress Oxide inks for stamping. I like that you can see the ink on the stamp because it has that pigment to it. Now when you stamp it, it stamps beautifully. It stamps crisp, it stamps solid. It stays wet a little bit, so you can heat emboss it if you want to. Or let it air dry or heat set it. Now this time I'm going to use traditional Distress Ink to stamp with it. And you can see that it's not as solid and vibrant. So there is the difference between Distress Ink on the left and Oxide Ink on the right. Now if you sprayed this with water, fun things would happen, but I'm gonna save that for another video. Now this is what's really cool, is the Distress Oxide Ink, when you stamp it on a dark color cardstock, you can see it because it's got that pigment bit to it. Now I've stamped it twice on two different pieces of craft cardstock here. Now on one of them, I'm going to mist it a little bit with some water from far away, so it's just a mist of water, and watch, as it gets wet, it reacts, and it almost is like you turn the light switch on it, and it starts to glow. It's pretty amazing. That's that oxide effect. So I can go ahead and heat set that. 
but this will be much more vibrant than the one that I didn't mist because I caused that one on the right to react by adding that little bit of water. It really makes it glow really quite beautiful. I can't wait to do techniques with that. Okay, so as I mentioned, the best way to get to know inks is to get inky and create some backgrounds with them. So let's start with that. Now, I am using the paper I have on hand. I'm using both Nina White cardstock and I'm using Bristol Smooth cardstock, but I encourage you to try whatever inks you may have. I am sure there are some that work better than others, and I will learn more about this as I play and share that in future videos. But for today, I'm just using good old white cardstock. Okay, so I'm working on a craft sheet here, and I am going to press some oxide inks firmly onto the craft sheet to get some of that ink out. And I'm using cracked pistachio, broken china, and fossilized amber. Doesn't look like much here, but watch, when you spritz it with water, it's like it turns on and starts to illuminate. I'm gonna drag my cardstock through here, kind of dab it around here and there. This is how Tim Holtz creates amazing backgrounds. I usually struggle with creating backgrounds like this, but with the oxide inks, I find I do much better. And you'll see that as we go. Now, there's a few things to remember. If you're not liking how it looks, just be patient. The thing with oxide inks is that as they dry, that's when the magic happens. When you add water and dry it, all the magic starts to happen. So you'll see that I am drying this often with my heat gun and I'm spritzing it often with my water bottle. Now I'm using a Tim Holtz water bottle that if you press lightly, it gives you bigger drops. If you press all the way, it gives you a mist. And throughout this, I'm mostly just pressing it lightly to get drops here and there. And you can see those little drops landing on the background. And as I add the water and heat it, you see the reaction start to happen. It's not much right now because this is so light. I put so little down, but it will become more and more intense. Now this is the fun thing. With Distress Oxide inks, you can layer lots and whatever you put on top, you'll be able to see because it has that opaqueness to it. So I can keep adding as many layers as I want. And because it has that opaque property to it, you'll be able to see the colors on top and you won't end up with a muddy mess. If I was using Distress Ink, traditional Distress Ink, at some point you just have to give up because you've kind of put all these translucent colors together and it ends up a muddy mess. But with this, if you're drying and adding water as you go between the layers, then you can layer colors on top of each other. It's fantastic. So if it's wet, you'll just keep blending. If it's dry between, you'll add colors on top. So you can see here, I've got lots of green going on, but if I come in with some blue, I can put that on top of the green. And you can get much better results this way, at least for me. Now I know inky techniques like this aren't for everyone, and that's okay. If you stick around in this really long video, you'll see some other techniques that might work well for you. Now notice, as I'm putting down more color, then more water, then drying and repeating, that I'm building up color, building up intensity, and you'll see more of that oxide look. Also, you'll notice that it's very creamy or a matte finish. It almost looks like it's suede or a chalk finish. It is chalk-like. I don't wanna say that it is chalk ink because it won't rub off. You don't have to worry about making a mess with it. It looks like chalk, it feels like chalk, but it doesn't really behave like chalk. So this is a finish to the background that you won't be able to get with any other inks that you may have. I wanted to show you again that you can layer any colors on top of each other. You can put pink on top of brown, you can do whatever you want. Here I put iced spruce down on my craft sheet, which is like a gray color, and I'm putting that on top of my blues and greens. At first, it doesn't seem like much, but as it dries, that gray kind of intensifies, and you'll see that gray even on top of those vibrant blues and greens. So you can really layer lots of colors here. That's what makes this fun and almost like foolproof because I really have a hard time with ink backgrounds like this, but with these, I had a ball. And there you can see what it looks like turned into a card. I will show you these cards at the end of the video. Now I wanted to show you a colorful one. And if you're a control freak like me, this is a fun way to uh, kind of control where the color goes. Tim will probably laugh at me for this, but I like to use acrylic blocks instead of the craft sheet too. These are small acrylic blocks from Simon's Stamp. I'm putting the oxide ink directly onto it and adding some water to it with my spray bottle and pressing this down onto my background. The reason I'm doing this is I kind of wanted it to look rainbow, so pink all the way to blue. And I couldn't control that with the craft sheet, but with the 
little acrylic blocks I was able to, and I can control where it goes. So I am also putting down a lot of ink this way because see how I smoosh it down and move it around? I'm putting heavy color down. I could do it lighter if I wanted to by adding more water. Now I'm going to keep adding more and more layers, and then I will go and add some yellow to that center area. I do like to dab every once in a while when there's only a few drops of color on the background because that seems to intensify the look. But notice, as I'm going, every time I have a heat gun going, I have a water bottle in my hand, adding little drops of water here and there to help that oxidized look. In a future video, I'll do two backgrounds, one Distress Ink and one Distress Oxide to compare the two. But just know that if I did this with Distress Ink, it would be a muddy mess by now because all the translucent layers would just like allow you to see through it and it would just be muddy. But here I can dry in between and layer the colors on top of each other. Now I like a little bit of shimmer, so I have some water here with Perfect Pearl Pigment Powder mixed into it so you get this pearlized water. And when I put some drops on here, when they dry, I'll have these like pearlized looking drops. Then we have the oxidation kind of going on. So we're gonna end up with a background with lots of interest to it. These are so much fun to create. It has that matte-like finish that is wonderful. So there's a closer look at that background. Again, I will show you these cards at the end of this video. But there's just kind of a jump in with both feet, look at the oxide inks. Next, I wanted to show you how you can create more intense, more subtle background. If those inky backgrounds aren't for you, something a little more subdued. This one, I went direct to paper first, and then I added water and added layers. And look how thick and beautifully this ink goes onto the paper. You could let that dry, kind of smooth it out a bit, and end up with a beautiful chalk-like paper. But I'm gonna spray it with some water and get that oxidized look to happen. So you'll notice I'm heating and spritzing and adding little drops of water here and there just to get the little bit of variation going. You can keep doing this, you can add more colors if you want to, but I'm going to just go with this, with just a quick background to show you how you can get really beautiful, bold backgrounds. Again, the more water you add, the more interest you'll have. And it's also fun to every once in a while dab it with a dry cloth to kind of remove some of that color, just like you do with Distress Inks, and really make those differences show. Because basically when you're adding water, you're bringing that pigment to the top. So when you dab it, you're removing it and giving that bit of difference. So there's the card sample using that more subtle looking background. Okay, so here I have some other examples of backgrounds I created. The example on the left, I put so many layers onto that you wouldn't believe. So many layers of color. You can see it almost looks like a faux granite with lots of color. The example on the right, I did very little. I let a lot of the white show through from behind. That's something that's great about these oxide inks. And now in this one, you can see lots of color. You can identify each color I used in there because I heated them between and layered them up. That's one of the great things about those oxide inks. And I just put some simple cards together creating these backgrounds because they are so colorful. And remember, in future videos, I'll talk more about these techniques. Okay, let's talk about watercolor. D traditional Distress inks work great for watercolor, and I find that the Distress Oxide inks do too, and they're a little bit different. So I put some faded jeans oxide ink onto my craft sheet, sprayed it with water, and you can see you can paint beautifully with it. Now these are great for coloring. You can color in stamps this way, create watercolor backgrounds, whatever you want. Get beautiful results, just like you do with the Distress inks. Now here I'm going to paint again, but this time using the faded jeans in the traditional Distress Ink, so you can compare the two. Now the results are pretty similar, but in real life you would notice that the oxide uh, there on the top has more of a smooth matte finish to it. And because it is an oxide ink with those opaque properties, you can layer colors on top of each other. That will be so huge for me because I struggle with watercolor. So I can kind of change how an area looks by layering on top. Here with the Distress Inks, you can see I just kind of keep moving the color around. But on the top, I can go back and add another layer of color on top of it after it's dried. So I really think Distress Oxide Inks would work great for watercolor, and I'll be sure to show that in the future too. Okay, so now I wanted to show you more of like a watercolor looking background. So we're going to do that card there on the right that's got that rainbow look to it. 
I'm going to do kind of like we did before, but change it up a little bit. I put the inks onto my craft sheet, adding some water to them that kind of turns them on and makes them glow. And then I'm just going to scribble back and forth here. Again, I'm just using regular white cardstock, but this would be great with watercolor paper too. Now, Tim Holtz says that he uses his heavy stock paper and that works best with the oxide inks. I don't have any, so I used what I have, but I will use those papers in the future. So there I did a soft wash back and forth with the Distress Oxide. As I'm drying it, I'm adding some spritzes of water and I get a beautiful wash background. Now I could have skipped these little splotches of water that I'm adding and I would have ended up with this soft like uh, watercolor background, but it would have like a matte finish to it. But because these inks do such cool things, when you add more and more water and dry in between, I decided to add these little splotches and it's just gorgeous. If I wanted to achieve this look with regular watercolors, it probably would have taken me a long time, but you can see it was really quick here. Here are some more examples. That one on the right, I did just like the one I just showed you with those stripes of color, but I started out by taking the ink pad directly to the paper to create stripes, just smearing the ink right across the background, and then I wet it to get that watercolor look. Now, if you're looking for something a little more controlled, a little more smooth, this example on the left, I did a watercolor wash on the background, but I kept it very smooth. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Starting out with white cardstock, I smeared stripes of ink right directly onto the paper. Then I took a wet brush and just zigzagged back and forth across the whole background to create that watercolor look. As I heat set it, it's gonna become matte and creamy looking and absolutely beautiful. And there's an example of how you can use these inks to your advantage to be really fast. That background took me no time at all and it's soft and smooth and gorgeous. And I couldn't get that look, that creamy look with any other product. Okay, another example, this one's pretty similar, but I'm telling you, I had so much fun making these backgrounds. Lila was with me and we were just getting inky and having a ball. We spent a whole day doing this. So for this one, I'm actually putting stripes of ink onto my craft sheet. Watch as I spritz them with water, they just start to glow. It's so beautiful. I'm gonna drag my paper through it and I'm going to do my best to not overthink the ink. I'm going to try to just do it and go with it. So I'm dragging it both ways so I cover the whole thing and I am going to stop, which is very hard for me. And I'm gonna heat set it and look how they blend together and you get this beautiful watercolor background. And there's a card showcasing it. It's got that matte finish, that chalk-like finish that is just gorgeous. You can create such a simple, stunning card with it. Okay, now for some backgrounds that actually were Lila's favorite, so I had to show them to you. I'm creating little splatters, and I'm going to do it on white cardstock and craft cardstock so you can see the difference. I've pressed various colors of Distress Ink onto my craft sheet and added water. And I'm just flicking little droplets of color onto white cardstock and craft cardstock. Now I'm going to dry these in between because I don't want the colors to blend. I want them to layer. So I'm just going kind of in rainbow order here, adding them, making sure the droplets are dry before I move on to the next color. If I did it while they were wet, then we would get that blending of color. And check out that oxidized look that you get when you dry it on that darker color cardstock. That pink, the worn lipstick is especially amazing. So I'm just going to keep doing this, adding more and more droplets, heat setting in between so that I can get gorgeous layers of droplets. And the results are beautiful. Now the white is of course fun. It looks like confetti in the background, perfect for a birthday card, but check out the craft. You can see that oxide look that you get. If I would have used regular distress inks, it wouldn't have been as vibrant. I can't wait to try all these techniques on different colors and types of cardstock to see the different results that I get. These were really fun for creating elements for cards too. So that craft cardstock got me thinking about more things that you can do with papers that are different than white. So many inking techniques we do on white cardstock. Let's take advantage of the fact that these oxide inks are great on colored cardstocks and play some more with that. So here I actually use stencils. You could use stamps if you want to. So I have some craft cardstock. This is Ranger's craft cardstock. And I'm going to tape it onto a stencil. This is a Hero Art stencil. And then I'm going to use oxide inks to ink on here. If I used regular inks, regular dye inks, they would kind of wash out on here. You'd see them, but they wouldn't be vibrant. You could do pigment inks and they would be vibrant. But with the oxide inks, when we spray them, they'll kind of glow. So I am applying onto here with my ink blending tool, 
both cracked pistachio and broken china distress inks, just different areas of color here and there. And I'm pressing it into there and make sure I get a lot of ink onto the craft cardstock. So this looks pretty, but when we spritz it from far away with a mist of water, you'll notice that it kind of turns on. I'm gonna heat set it first. Now I'm misting and watch, it looks like it's starting to slowly glow. It really is impactful in real life and just beautiful. Almost makes it look a little bit dimensional really gorgeous. I think it'd be fun to layer different colors on top of each other. I do come in once in a while with a uh, wet baby wipe and press against some of the ink to make it even pop more. Absolutely beautiful. Very fast to do and it really gives a glowing background. So I went ahead and turned this into a card and I really was happy with these results. I think there'll be a lot of techniques that will be fun using oxide inks on colored cardstock. Okay, now time for the winning thing about Distress Oxide inks. I've liked these inks and this just made me jump up and down. The ability to blend these inks is phenomenal. I've always used Distress inks for blending. Some people have trouble with it still. You will not have trouble with Distress Oxide inks. Let me show you. I have white cardstock here and I'm going to make the smooth rainbow blending that you see here. I'm using traditional ink blending tools, the mini ones. I've just got a new fresh foam for my Distress Oxide. And I'm going to ink it up and watch. If you get a harsh line, see those harsh lines? Watch, I'm gonna get a circle there. With Distress inks, traditional ones, you'd be in trouble. But with these, you can keep going and blend them out. Because they have those pigment properties to it, you can keep blending them out, which is what makes them amazing. So I'm just gonna keep going here and do a rainbow order here with multiple inks. And you'll notice that you can keep going over things. You can add more color, you can blend them out. Very easy to do. If I wanted to do a rainbow ink with other inks, it would take me a lot of time. But with the oxide inks, they're fast. So yes, I like using the oxide inks for blending and I probably will from now on. I still will use traditional distress inks for many things too. They are two very different inks and I hope I've shown that in today's video. Now when this dries, it'll dry seamless, a beautiful transition of color along this piece of cardstock and it will have that matte chalk-like finish to it that's gorgeous. So I really feel these Distress Oxide inks are definitely worth the investment. There are so many advantages to these Oxide inks, so many things that it offers that other inks don't, that it's definitely worth it. Now I do wanna tell you that I bought these inks. I didn't want to um, anybody to think that I was using them because I was given them or paid to or anything. I'm using these because I wanted to and I'm very happy with them. Tim is sending me a set of these inks and instead of keeping them for myself, I'm gonna give them away over my blog. So be sure to check that out. Now as this dries, it's gonna end up being absolutely smooth and seamless and have that soft look to it. So I did turn them into cards and look at that gorgeous background. So you can use these oxide inks to blend any colors together without any problem at all. I also wanted to mention, you can blend on those dark cardstocks. Don't forget about that. I showed that at the beginning of the video, but here it is on craft cardstock. It almost makes it look like the edge of your cardstock is glowing. So I think there's a lot of fun techniques in this that you can blend these on a darker colored cardstock. Okay, so I am a card maker and everything I create, I turn into a card and give to someone. So I felt it necessary to include that in this video. So I'm gonna take all these backgrounds and turn them into cards. First up, we have those inky backgrounds we created at the beginning of the video. I added to this some products from Neat and Tangled. I die cut the word love from simple white cardstock. That die set actually includes the shadow too. So I die cut that from vellum and I put it behind it and that allows it to kind of stand out. I also white heat embossed that stamped sentiment on a piece of vellum and stretched that across and added some simple white hearts. I did the same thing on this stenciled background that I showed you earlier too. This allows the background to show, but still include that sentiment on the front. And I kept it white and vellum to be very simple. Now for this one, I added a white die cut from Hero Arts. It's this dimensional die cut of a koi fish, really perfect for that inked background. And then I added a sentiment from their goldfish layering stamp set that says, just keep swimming. Added that with white heat embossing and made that stand out too. I also did this with that soft rainbow background. 
When you have so much going on in the background, it's nice to keep what you add very simple. So white is often best. Now this is that wash watercolor background that I created that was real vibrant. I added a background die cut from white cardstock and then this wonderful sentiment from this fantastic Jane's Doodle stamp set. I really like the stamp set. This let your faith be bigger than your fear. I think I'll be using that one quite often. I also used it for this card that you see here. This is that rainbow inked background that we created with our ink blending tool. Without any water, just the ink blending tool. Look how smooth it is from that pink to the blue. Absolutely beautiful. I'll be honest, blending this background was one of the last things I tried with the oxide inks and it was the thing I was most excited about. Okay, for this one, I have those little splatters of color on craft cardstock. I used that window die that has the balloons, that's from Poppy Stamps. And I also added some string to the balloons, just some silver string. And then I added the word die cuts. Those are from Impression Obsession. I just did that from black cardstock and added a little bit of shimmer with my Wink of Stella pen so it would be shiny. Really like keeping these cards simple with white and black accents. Here I have the real vibrant background that I created by going direct to paper and then adding water. The die cut here is from My Favorite Things. It has that faux stitching on it. And I used a beautiful stamp sentiment from my Mama Lay and I added some sequins, some little sil or I'm sorry, little gold star sequins from Pretty Pink Posh. By the way, I know I'm going through this fast because this video is long. They are all linked below in my YouTube description and I have pictures and more information on my blog. Okay, for these next few cards, I used dies from My Favorite Things. It has some faux stitching on it. I also used a scripture stamp from Bossy Jossy that I just love, stamped that with black ink. Now that bow is from a Studio Cadia die set. You can see it there. That's a newer stamp company to me and I'm really happy with it, the products I've gotten. I die cut that from some silver glitter cardstock and just added that on top. Kept it very simple. Really was perfect for those backgrounds. Okay, now here's one that I didn't show in the video but a background that I created when I was playing. Now this one I used some Concord and Ninth products. They have this great Hello die set that cuts all these different pieces of the hello die. You can see it there, it cuts the shadow, an outline of the shadow, and then a thin hello die itself. You can layer these on top of each other and have a ball. I use those to cut out the piece that you see there. And then for this one, I actually created some background pieces and I kind of gave up on them. But what I did is I used some poppy dies to die cut balloons from the areas that I did like. So you can keep even the little pieces, die cut them and use them. So I created little balloons. I stamped that Concord and Ninth Wish stamp set. Uh, and then I used a silver gel pen to create little lines for the strings on the balloons. This one was fast to put together and I really like it. So I think I'll make more of these for birthday cards. You could even make masculine cards this way if you wanted to. I encourage you to just play and have fun and then you can use your little pieces to make cards. And here's proof that nothing goes to waste. Even those little slivers I cut off when I was turning all my pieces into cards, I used them to create this like woven background of a card here. And then I stamped a sentiment from right at home, right in the center. This is one of my favorite cards from the bunch and I just used my scraps to create it. I encourage you, whenever you get a new product, just play, have fun with it. Then you can use whatever you create to turn into cards. Okay, anything you're interested in, it's linked below in my YouTube description. But more than ever, I encourage you to go over to my blog. I'll have photos of every one of these cards with more information on the products I used and things you can do with them. Thanks so much for sticking with me for this long video. I hope it was fun and helpful to you in deciding if oxide inks are something that you need to add to your crafty stash. For more videos, you can click there in the middle. Be sure to hit subscribe, and I hope you'll return again soon. I hope you have a great day.